going to talk this morning about the second habit, the second habit for happy Christian. And again, I, I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, this comes next, next to wisdom, next to wisdom, next to pursuing wisdom is prioritizing meditation. Pursue wisdom, prioritize meditation. How many of you, how many of you have, uh, over the course of your life, have worried about something, anything? Just give me a hand raise. Anything. You ever worry about anything? Okay. How, how many of you find yourself worrying about everything? Okay, we call, uh, yeah? Who, who? Worry about everything? We call you worry warts. Okay? Because warts are not desirable, right? So we call them worry warts. We think that these people, they worry about so much. And let me tell you what, you guys are going to make great meditators. Because essentially, essentially, meditation is what you're doing when you're worrying so intensely about something. Biblical meditation is not so much the act of emptying your mind of all of the bad stuff. But it's filling your mind of all of the good stuff. There are so many people that, that come up with this idea of meditation, of biblical meditation. They say, you just need to empty your mind. Really? I mean, that's like not possible to empty your mind of all that stuff, right? You wish you could, but it's really not possible. Biblical meditation is not so much emptying your mind of all the bad stuff, but it's filling your mind of all of the good stuff. It's all of the good stuff. As a matter of fact, if you were to empty, if you could empty your mind of, 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 of all things... All you do is leave room for uh, well, wrong things, right? So here's what I think. Here's, when, I, when I talk biblical meditation, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking, I, I call this, I call this the, the, the replacement theory. Okay? Replacement theory or the displacement theory. Like when you displace one thing with another thing. You ever, you ever, uh, you ever fill a glass in the, uh, and I've used this as an illustration, you ever fill a glass in, in, a, in the sink and it's got like chocolate milk in it, you, you turn on, you turn on the, uh, the water and the water that goes in, it actually displaces it so it actually becomes clear, right? This is displacing what was once there with something what's new, right? So, biblical meditation, when I talk biblical meditation, it's not just, you know, um, I mean, this, this is not what I'm talking about, okay? Biblical meditation is thinking on the right Things, thinking on the right things. Uh, de meditation defined by, defined by Webster's Dictionary is this. It's to engage in contemplation or reflection. To engage in contemplation or reflection. It also says to focus one thoughts, one's thoughts on, uh, on, reflect on, or ponder over. Okay, That is, that is Webster's uh, definition of, of meditation. Uh, simply put, meditation is thinking about something in a focused and reflective manner. Thinking about something in a focused and reflective manner. Thinking about something is not necessarily meditation, but thinking about something in a focused and reflective manner. It's what we do when we worry. It's what we do when we think about something so long that we, get, we end up getting worked up over this thing. You know, it's like we just can't let it go. I mean, how many of you have done that? You just get so bitter and it's like, man, I just can't stop thinking about this thing. That right there is essence of meditation. You are focusing on and you're reflecting over this. This is what you're doing. But it is too much on the plate, that's for sure. Now, this is something, reflection, meditation. Meditation is something that we need to do daily. It's something that we need to do on a daily basis. We, 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 so many people let time pass where they say, you know what, I, 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 I'll meditate on, on God's truth later. And, and I'll tell you what happens when that happens is, is all we've done is give place for the things that we shouldn't be thinking about to enter into the place of the area that we, that we should be thinking about something. We should be thinking about the right things, though. We should be thinking about the right things. The more personal, let me give you a piece of application, the more personal your relationship is with God, the more you'll meditate. The more you'll meditate. And the more you meditate, the more personal your relationship will become with God. 
This is something that should be done continually on a daily basis, hourly basis. All right, let's get to some of these things. Let's get to some of these things. First of all, first of all, um, the priority of meditation, it pleases God. The priority of meditation pleases God. When you think on, when you ponder the things of God, it pleases Him. It pleases Him. My wife and I, we've had this conversation. She is, um, we've talked about flowers a lot and and, you know, I don't know how many of you guys buy, buy flowers for your wife. Uh, my wife, her favorite flower is a, a rose. Right? Rose? No, it's not a rose. What is it? A, a, what is it? It's a flower. It's a flower. A daisy. That's what I was said. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Her favorite flower is a daisy. She'll be getting some daisies soon. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so. Uh, as, we, as we talk about flowers, we say, you know, I mean, man, we, you know, I just would love to buy you some flowers. You know what she says to me? She says, don't worry about that. She says, I would rather not have flowers. Now, that's a, he's, he's easy that way. I mean, that's just, that just saves the money anyway. So, uh, but she always says this. She always says, if, if, you have to, if you have to get me flowers, right, you can just get me one. I say, well, one? And she says, well, one is, good as a, is as good as a dozen. And I, and I say, well, what, what do you mean by that? And, and she says these words. She says, and you've all heard this, it's the thought that counts. The thought that I thought about her. That's what counts. It's the thought that I thought about her. It wasn't necessarily getting her a rose when she really likes daisies. It's not getting her a daisy when she likes roses. It's not getting her a dozen or two dozen. That doesn't... That doesn't matter in the world of meditation what matters to me, what matters to her is this idea this concept that i thought about her and you see that pleases god when we think about god when we meditate on what god tells us it pleases him it's no different in in terms of a relationship just like my wife likes to be thought of and all you ladies like to be thought of, and all you guys, you like to be thought of. We like to be thought of. We, 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 we want someone to think about us. And God is no different than that. And the, and, and the thoughts that we think of God should be thoughts that are good, should be thoughts that are pure. David wanted good thoughts, meditative thoughts. He says in Psalm 19, he says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the meditations of my heart. Now it's interesting because when you, when you think about this verse, I, I think we should do as David did. Not only, not only was it what David said with his mouth, but also what he thought with his mind. He wanted not only the words that he speaks to please God, but also the thoughts that he thinks. And when, 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 we are, when we are thinking on good, pure, right things, and we're thinking about godly things, God's pleased by that. God's pleased by that. And we should strive for this same thing. This meditation deals with our thinking. The meditation deals with our thinking, and this is very, very important. Because what we think, what we think will determine the way we act. What we think will determine the way we act. As a matter of fact, one guy said it best this way. He says, we go in the direction of our thinking. We go in the direction of our thinking. See, that, that, that's why the Christian life is really about getting your thoughts right. That's why when we were running the addiction program, we'd have these, these addicts come in here, and I said, I'm not, and, and, and again, not to minimize it, but I said, I'm not concerned with your behavior. Your behavior is a byproduct. It's a byproduct of the way you think. The way we act, the words coming out of our mouth are there because of the thoughts we think in our mind. It's a, it's, we go in that direction, so we have to make sure that when we meditate, that's why I think God is so pleased with not only the words, but the thoughts that we think. 
It's very, very important. We need to be thinking the right thoughts. And what's really, really neat, what's really neat is that, is that we can have a, um, we can have a do-over. You ever want to, you ever want to have a do-over, where you're just like, okay, do-over. I, I think our, our think our thoughts are like that. You know what I mean? Like our thoughts are like that. Like we can have a, you guys, you guys know what a, a CD is, a compact disc. This is a compact disc. This, uh, this specific compact disc, this CD. This, uh, this came following the 8-track and the 45. This is actually a 45. It's just shrunk down. <laughs> no, it's not. This is a CD-R. It just simply means that you can write information one time on this disc. You can write it one time. Now, they make another type of disc, which is called a CD-RW, which is a rewritable disc. And that's a really neat disc because what happens is when you can put information on it and then you can write over that information with new information. You can put new stuff on that disc. And, and, and I think oftentimes life is like a disc. See, Forrest Gump had it wrong. Life isn't like a box of chocolates. It's like a disc. And I think that we can put more information and we can put new information on the disc. You have to do it the right way. But it can replace all of the old stuff. It can replace all of the old stuff. Now, Psalm 143.5 is, is, is really a neat, a neat verse. One, well, Psalm 143.5. I remember the days of old. I meditate. Listen to this carefully. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. Now, as I began to just meditate on this verse, as I began to contemplate, ponder this particular verse, I came up with just a thought as I was thinking this. And I said, it's neat. I remember the days of old and I meditate on all thy works. And I think that's corporately. As I began to look at this, I think that's a, a corporate work. That's like uh, God, created, God created the heaven and he created the earth and he created all that's therein, right? That's what I think. When I see, he, I, I, and I meditate on all thy works, right? Meditate is similar to the word muse. It means to ponder. So not only does he meditate, does he ponder on all the works that God has done corporately, now pay attention, but also I look at this and I say, but I muse on the works of thy hands. Now I think that's personal. I think that's what God does, what God does personally and intimately in our life. Not only, does he, not only does he work in our lives on a, on a grand scale, on a macro scale, but also on a micro scale. And I think that if we are like David, if we are like the psalmist, if we are, like, if we are where we need to be in our Christian life, we can begin to not just look at what God has done on a big level, but also on a little level. Not only what he's done for the masses but also just for the man, just the individual person, the one person. And this, this I think, is this, this reforms your whole process of being. When, when you go outside and you look around and, and you say, look at all the things God has done, and then you say, wow, look at all the things God has done for me. That's two different ways to look at it. And this is what David did. This is what David did. And, and, and I think when we prioritize meditation, when we think this way in our lives, we, we rewrite the disc. We, write the, we, we, we put new information over the old information. I think that pleases me. I'm sure it pleases my wife to know that, that I don't think about the past girls, right? because I put new information in there. And that pleases her. And when we meditate, when we prioritize meditation, it pleases God.